So, Gundam Evolution is ending. If things go to plan, I'll probably release this on the day that the game closes. It's gone out on the appropriately titled Last Shooting Season. I only played the game a few times in Season 1, and only came back for the last couple months, simply because I wanted to be able to remember the game. After all, failed games like this rarely get that much remembrance. Even more so when it's something like this, a title that feels honestly kind of just like a cash grab. And yet, while it's likely that this was all at the behest of some higher up, this is a game whose developers clearly cared at least, even if they weren't able to meet the players or the executives' expectations. Also before I begin, this video is going to be a bit rambly and not heavily edited. This is just some final thoughts in an unplanned vo bonus video, since this is also outside my usual upload schedule after all. And while I'm talking about it, there's not going to be a video at the start of next week like there usually would be. I have one more plan for the year, and it's going to be a big one, so I want to devote all my time to working on that. But let's get to, actually, the subject of today's video. Here's just a few things I want to talk about with the last few weeks of Gundam Evolution behind me. First off, the Comfer is awesome. Pretty much everything you'd want from this suit, and that I had hoped it could be. Those of you who know me from Gundam Battle Operation know that I'm a pretty big fan of this thing. That, all that said, I'm not intimately familiar enough with Gundam Evolution to say for sure if it's a bit overpowered or if I'm just very well suited to it. I've done some feats that feel pretty insane, at least for the admittedly low level I'm at, but I've also run into some bad match-ups, and I've seen less skilled players in it just get completely crushed. So, who knows. I'll leave balanced discussion to better players, but I enjoy playing it. To talk a little bit about it and just record something for the future, the Comfer is a low health mobile suit with three boosts. Its primary fire shoots either its shotgun or its twin bazookas, with the shotgun also able to ADS to sacrifice rate of fire but increase accuracy. Both have decent rate of fire and are easier to hit with or to engage multiple enemies with thanks to, respectively, their spread and their splash damage. One of the Comfer's special abilities is just to switch between them, and I've noticed this sometimes seems to passively reload them. Don't fully know the mechanics on that one. But it does mean that despite the low ammo counts, the Comfer is surprisingly good at keeping up the pressure. Its other special ability is the Sturmfausts, which are a quick-fire weapon that deal a nice bit of explosive damage and slows down targets, making for a great tool to help finish someone off. And its G maneuver is the Chain Mine. Swing it around and you'll either attach it to one target, dooming them to a pretty certain death and potentially catching their allies if they're too close, or laying the Chain Mines down along the ground, covering more area but being easier to escape from. Ultimately, it's an ambusher suit, one that likes to play aggressively and often a bit away from teammates, similar to the Barbatos, Exia, and Zaku 2. But despite that, it is also very team-focused. Compared to other ambushers, it isn't quite as effective as a pick class. Instead, it's a hit-and-run burst damage dealer that specializes in starting or ending fights. In 1v1 it excels, since it's easier to connect starting the fight to ending it, but it's still outclassed by certain suits like the Barbatos, and it's very vulnerable to being countered by a few others like the Sazabi. Definitely a threat to most enemies if you can catch them out on their own, but also not the best at this rule. Instead, the Comfer excels at hit-and-run tactics. Because it can deal good bursts of damage with the possibility of hitting multiple targets, either poking at range with the bazookas or flanking aggressively with a shotgun, it can effectively soften up enemies, either letting allies clean them up or forcing the enemies to back off to survive. Meanwhile, if it manages to close in on wounded enemies, it's 
able to clean them up incredibly quickly. Often it's quite capable of flanking and quickly eliminating a wounded enemy with its shotgun before vanishing. But if a group of enemies is badly wounded, I've sometimes found myself scoring easy double or triple kills just because the Kampfer is that good at finishing them off. So ultimately the Kampfer's power lies in being able to contribute damage in team fights as well as distracting foes. Whether it's softening them up from a distance with the bazookas, or distracting them by flanking. Honestly, it's pretty much perfect for me, given its combination of glass cannon aggression and tactical team play. It's a shame that such a suit is only added at the very end, but... It does feel like a fitting conclusion, considering, as I mentioned last video, the suits just kept getting better and better designed as the game went on. Like the colony map I praised in my last video, it has a lot going on, and the shipping containers help to remind you of the scale of mobile suit combat. Also, the map effectively uses a variety of choke points, open areas, and hallways to create a very enjoyable and varied combat experience. Although, that said, it does feel a little bit defense-favored. I've found most matches usually stall on the first point and come down to whatever team had the best result when time is called. Usually I only see the second point come up when one team is completely stomping the other. At the very least, unlike that one lunar map where the two bomb sites are right next to each other, this one is a lot more varied. One point is right above the other, but as far as I know, there's no quick way between them, like on that shitty lunar map, so it's actually pretty frantic to try and cover both. So all in all, it's one of the better maps. Oh, and if you look up on the map, not that you can do that anymore, you can see a classic Gundam space battle in the distance. A very nice touch. But this can't all be compliments. There's also a few extra problems I noticed from my additional time with the game. First, I do think the game got stuck in a bit of a negative feedback loop. The best modes were definitely the asymmetric attack and defense maps, which I think might have led to people preferring these and possibly the fact that we never got too many maps for the symmetric modes that maybe could have fixed them. I also found myself really hating how 1v1s often devolved into who can claim a health pack mid-fight. Honestly, I think the game could completely scrap the health pack since you have regenerating health and once it kicks in it's pretty fast, so unless there's one right there, it's usually not worth the time to run back to it. So in the end, the health packs seem mostly just to be there to decide the winners of firefights. I mean, I do like that they emphasize math knowledge, but I just feel like it derails combat a bit too much just because it's too close to a guaranteed victory, unless there is a extreme mismatch in effectiveness or ability. Another problem is that the composition of the enemy team rarely feels as impactful as it is in other hero shooters. Team Fortress 2 and Overwatch, two of the pillars of the genre, were both defined by many hard counters in their game design, and this created drastic contrasts that meant that matches could play out very differently depending on your team and the enemy team. But here, the focus is so much on team fights, and very few suits have an extreme enough impact or matchup to feel like they really change how you play when you're up against them. Instead, the game's variety mostly comes from the map you're on and what suit you're playing. There is enough variety to last for a bit, but it still contributes to the fact that compared to better shooters, Gundam Evolution just starts to get repetitive relatively quickly which honestly is undermining pretty much the biggest advantage of a player versus player game, is that they do have a theoretically infinite number of possible scenarios, but in a game like this, those scenarios just don't feel different enough to be as engaging as they could. By the end of my time with Gundam Evolution, I just kind of felt bored. I didn't even bothered to play in the last couple of days, since while I do feel some pressure to play it while I still can, especially when there are still some suits I never tried, 
that's kind of all I'm feeling. I don't feel like there'll be any last exciting or interesting scenarios to encounter. I, I'm just not inspired to play it anymore. I'm just afraid of missing out. But in spite of those complaints, it is notable how the game is a lot better off than when it started. But that fumbled launch might have been too much for it. The initial run of suits didn't feel very inspired by what they're allegedly based off of. The monetization was very egregious, as was the battle pass. And the updates seemingly were more concerned in loading up a lot of new cosmetics and only a few of them added more than a single suit and a single stage. It was a weak start followed by slow improvement that didn't come fast enough. Ultimately, though, I think it was kinda just doomed by corporate greed. That greed forced the painful monetization, kept the game from improving quickly, and ultimately led to it being shut down before it had a chance to slowly fix the problems it had. At the very least, I don't blame the dev team. They kept supporting the game to the very last. They could have just half-assed it and took their paychecks. And sadly, the game has been so much more fun with the shitty monetization gone, and with the suits being easy to unlock, and cosmetics being fairly plentiful. A turn of events that could only exist when the game was closing. It's just a shame to see all the hard work go to waste, but that's the way things go in this age of live service bullshit. Best we can hope for is that some capable fans might resurrect the game themselves. If you want to appreciate some of the work that went into this game, I also recorded and uploaded every cosmetic item in the game. The video is nearly five hours, and I spent a lot of time recording this, so if you want to tell someone about some of your favorite cosmetics from this game, I'd really appreciate it if you used my video to do so. But that's the end, isn't it? Might as well close this out. I've seen matches you wouldn't believe. Walls painted in guns tank stamps. I've watched teammates choose suits that don't make any sense. It's sad to see another game lost in time, like tears and rain. Time to uninstall.